Hello, in my video today I'm going to share with you another one of my fabric journals but instead of using the sewing machine this time I'm going to sew it together by hand. I wanted to make a journal that was too big to fit under my sewing machine so that's what I've done this year and here is the technique I used to put it together. A couple of years ago I was experimenting with the zipper and felt technique that I'd seen on the internet and I actually bought the pattern and I made this piece which I had intended to frame but then I decided to turn it into a book cover so that became, became the sites of my fabric journal for this year and this was way too big to fit under the my sewing machine to join it down the sides there. So that's why I decided to make a hand stitch journal this year. I've made all my pages the same way as I've showed previously in my other fabric art journal. I've just done whatever I'm going to do and then for this journal I've mostly just turned this pay the fabric over to just give a neat edge rather than doing binding. It was just personal preference. You don't have to do that. You don't even have to stitch it down. You could just pin it while you're working if you want to. So that's one. Here's another page I did. And these two pages I'm going to join together in the same way that I do with this other journal. I've got a fabric strip. This matches this colour. So I'll pop that under there and it will, it will look like that. I'll just leave a little bit of a gap in the middle there and I will stitch these to the back. Now because I'm hand stitching I stitched along here initially then I realized that it's actually better to stitch it along this edge so this is one where I've already stitched it and you can see I've got the these, these two are the initial stitchings I did just tacking stitch, it doesn't have to be anything fancy I have stitched the ends securely but then I've stitched along just going in and out just right along the edge there so that when it's in the book there's no gap there because initially when I had stitched over here there was a bit of a gap so I've stitched it together in that method and it's pretty much the same as when I did this use the sewing machine and I just stitched a line of stitching down there so that te that part of it is the same and I did that with all my pages and then I've joined some of them together. Now I've already started stitching these together. All I did was go in, out, just to use a simple ladder stitch to stitch it together all the way around the entire thing. So just to, to stitch them together in a stack I took one double page that was stitched and joined with the fabric strip and the next double page that's stitched and joined together and then I lined up this far edge over here and I pinned it to make sure it was secure and then because this fabric strip's already secure I just stitched it along there with a simple ladder stitch. I started at, at this edge just because it was easier. So I've stitched it basically where those two previous lines of stitching are. So I've gone into that one, into this one, into that one and so on all the way down. And then I've continued around the corner just catching these two pages together all the way along. You could do an overcast stitch or a blanket stitch 
You can even do a tacking stitch through, but you just need to stitch that all the way around, which is what has been done with these previous pages. And they are very secure now. That is basically a book already. So the next thing I have to do will be to attach my covers. This is the back page which I have also stitched a extra strip onto and the front page you can see has an extra strip to attach to the cover. So now I'll stitch that to there. I have an inside cover which We'll need to have this edge finished off, but then that will be stitched to the inside there, and this will be in the middle. I am going to use some rather stiff interfacing in between. It, it's actually um, hat making material that I bought at the fabric store, stiffening. So that will go in there before I stitch it all together and that will just make the cover a little stiffer and that will just be hand stitched on as well so there's really no difference it's made exactly the same way as the machine stitch journal but it's just done with hand stitching and although I thought it would take a long time because it's just a basically a running stitch it didn't take very long at all and it's as you can see it's quite secure it's not coming apart um, so if you want to make a journal that's an odd size that won't fit in your machine you can I'll just finish this off and attach everything together and then I'll show you the finished result so now I've finished putting my book together. I did a little bit of embroidery on the spine before I attached it and that just comes over to cover the edge of the pages. And you can see this strip of fabric that was connected to the back of this just goes through and both this cover, the inside cover and the outside cover are sa have that sandwiched in between. I added a binding to neaten off the edges and as I said I added this extra piece across the spine. If you had really pretty joins in your pages, your joining strips, you might choose not to put that piece on but it's up to you. So now I'll give flip through of my journal. This is a cross stitch I did a long time ago and I had it as a cushion cover but now I don't want the cushion cover anymore so I've just turned it into a, the inside cover of my book. This one was for a circle challenge we did last year at my textile group and I've since added it to a page and mimicked the stitching to make it blend better. This was a workshop on the web class and this was for my challenge for my textile group for this year. This is a page of textile or different me art mediums and I'm going to do a video of the techniques I used in this one in the future. This one was a screen printed design that I, I made a screen print and printed it out and added that as my focal point. This page is about mono printing and this is another screen printed design which I turned into this miniature textile collage but then I decided to put it into my book. So I've added extra details to make it into a full page. 
This is my latest textile collage and it's based around this postcard I did for our postcard swap in our textile group. I made two so I could keep one. And this was inspired by this piece which is from I made following um, Maggie Gray's book on mixed media techniques. This is another screen printed design that's been embroidered and added to the page. And this was another challenge piece for my textile group. This is the second of the texture mediums that I will demo shortly. This was from a workshop I did with Amanda McCarver. She's a Canadian artist who does a lot of um, embroidered installation work. You can check out her website. Um, I'll put a link in the notes for this video. This was another piece from McCanda, Amanda McCarver's, um, sorry it's not McCarver, it's McAvor. I don't know why I'm saying her name wrong, apologies. Um, Amanda McAvor's workshop that we did. And this was another of the screen printed designs and I've, again, I did the rectangle which initially I was going to put two on the same page but then I decided to use different colourways for both of them. So I've just turned it into its own textile and this one I've experimented with a lot of different um, machine embroidery stitches. Some of these um, I may not have put onto my blog yet but I will will be putting them on there so you can get a closer look at the details. And this is for our textile groups challenge on doors. And here I've got another cross stitch um, with a bit of drawn thread work and I've just embroidered, added embroidery details for my end inside cover. And that's the back cover which has a little bit of a mistake because I cut it out wrong. But that's okay. Only you and I know that. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this miniature demo. If you need further in um, details of the machine embroidery books, the ones that I put together with the sewing machine, which is what this one is based on, um, check out my other videos on my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.